The first step to do the color fill legends is to assign the rooms and the tags. So that is like the first important step to do so. Since here I'm having look overall two different floors, so I'm going to start with level one. So you go there on level one, I'm going to put it on consistent color so I can see everything here, and then start assigning the rooms here. So you go there on the architecture tab, under the room and area, we have room. So let's start selecting the room and assigning. As you can see, wherever that I'm having like in space all covered up with some walls, that rooms automatically can be taken. So I'm going to go there and click on OK. So right now, as you can see, I'm having one room there. I'm having another room there, also one here. However, if I want to like click there, as you can see, all these spaces is going to get shared. So if I click on there, then technically these spaces are not differentiated, right? Are not separated, which is important for us. So for example, I'm having like a TV room here, I'm having like a living room here, and then I'm having like an entrance part here. So I need to have like different spots, right? Or like I need to make sure that Revit can understand that, okay, like those are, those should not be considered as one common space, right? So since we're not having walls uh, separating these spaces, then we have to do so manual. How we would be able to do that through an um, option called room separator, right? So we need to separate the spaces. That to do that, we select the room uh, separator. And for example, I wish to have a separation starting from here. So I'm just going to do a simple run, simple line. As we can. So right now, this space will be considered as a standalone space, right? Because we, we have used, although like there is no wall, but the room separator is going to play the role of them. So you're fine. If you wish to have like another sort of separation here, then you should do another room separation. From, for example, I wish to have one. Now that we have applied the room separators, I can go again ahead with room. And as you can see, from now on, Revit will recognize these spaces differentiate. So I'm going to place one there. I'm going to place one there. And this is like the common space that I'm going to place. In. So now you're fine in terms of assigning the room, right? Now, the next thing is naming those. So, for example, I'm going to name that one as the bedroom, right? Hit on enter, as you can see. Then, um, or let's do another thing. I'm just going to do a control Z here. Just going to remain all the names the same and try to uh, bring on the color so we can see that the colors and the changes through the colors. So, to bring on the color fill legend, what you can do is you go like all the way up there to the annotate tab. You go there to the annotate tab. And then we have something under the color field part called color field legend, right? <clears throat> so I'm going to click there on color field legend and then place the color field legend here. Then I'll be asked with this question that like the space type, I'm going to put it on rooms. And then the color scheme, I'm going to put it on name. So it should be on rooms and on name. Then I'm going to click on OK. Then as you can see, all these spaces, according to the names that they're having, they will assign the color. Since we're only having one name, for that reason, all the rooms are sharing the same color. However, when we start assigning different names, you can see that the colors will be changing so let's do that i'm gonna do that as bedroom hit on enter as you can see the name is getting changed i'm gonna put that as a tv room entrance we 
kitchen, bathroom, and then living. Right? So as you can see, according to that legend, overall we're having around six different colors according to the different occupancies that we have for each space. Now, another important thing that like we need to know before like going ahead and assigning other stuff is that um, right now what you can see under this tag is um, like the room tag, which probably is not like that useful at the moment for now. Meaning that the room tag itself is like very important, but right now in that specific um, color field legend that we're using, there is not like that much important to have those room tags. However, if we could have the areas on, then that would be much more useful, right? If you guys could know that each space is sharing how much of like the uh, area in terms of like square feet or square meters, that's like an essential information. So in order to apply these changes that I just said, I'm going to click on the tag, then I'm going to go to the edit type. And here you can uncheck that box show room number. I'm going to uncheck that box. And then instead, I'm going to assign the show area button. So uncheck the show room number and check the show area. And then click on OK. As you can see, instead of the room number, now I'm having the area per each space, right? So that is like one important thing. Right now, on level one, on floor plan level one, what you guys can see is a color field legend that is sharing the occupancy of each space along with the area, right? So I'm having both of this information at the same time on, right? But what if I want to have, let's say, at one sort of document, I want to have the uh, occupancies on, then at the other one, I want to have like another color field legend that uh, sort my plan according to the area. Because right now, I cannot sort the same document or the same plan with the area as long as I'm having the occupancies as the parameter, right? So if you wish to sort your plan with different sort of parameters through the color field legend, then you need to do some changes. However, I wish to keep, let's say, this floor plan as what it is. So I'm not going to touch that. Instead, I want to duplicate like more floor plan from level one to assign these changes and have much more information for my clients. So what I can do, I can go there on the floor plan, right click there, and then go with the duplicate and then duplicate with detailing. That's what I can do. So I go ahead and then do the duplicate with detailing. So as you can see, a split image of like the same level one, get happens in here. For example, here, I'm gonna go there on the rename and put on as level one area. So that means that this floor, instead of the occupancies, is gonna have the area as the parameter. So this time to do the changes, what I'm going to do, I'm going to click there on the legend. As you can see, I'm having something called edit scan. So I'm going to click on edit scan, right? And then as you can see, these rooms are all sorted by name or let's say by the occupancy that we have. According to that, the colors are assigned. However, I wish to have another value or another parameter called the area. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate that, put on area, click on OK. And then here, under that, what I can do, I can change the um, format that I have. For example, here the color is on name, right? You can go with, for example, other parameters that you have, like the area that I have. So I'm going to click on area, going to click on OK. And as you can see here, the area, the scan area that we did is actually right now sorted under the parameter area. And all the colors 
are happening according to those values. So I can do by values or by ranges. Even. For example, if you wish to have like an um, plan that shows you any sort of spaces that is having like more than 20, for example, square meters, that's the way you can do. So you can sort your whole plan to two different categories, less than 20 meters or more than 20 meters, right? Or you can do other formats here. Um, for example, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna apply to the places, making sure that it's square meters, right? And then um, according to the areas that we have, let me see what we have here. So if like we put on 20 meters, we would be still fine. So let me just go with that 20 meters so we can detect if like we're having any space with sharing the area lower than the 20 square meters. I'm gonna click on apply and click on okay. And as you can see, the whole spaces is gonna get um, divided in two main categories, lower than the 20 square meters and higher than the 20 square meters with that. However, if you click on level one, since you duplicated your color code scan, you still having the same style that we had here. So nothing has touched here. So I'm all good on level one. I'm having my level one area here. However, if I click there, I go on the edit scan, and instead of my range, I decide to go by value, I can still have a color code scan sorted according the value that I get. Let's click on apply. Let's click. So according to those colors, I can see, let's say, different occupancies with different sizes. That's also one other thing. So according to the parameter, according, let's say, to uh, different sheets, you can come up with different results. Now, what is important is to apply the same thing on our level two. So I'm going to go on level two. Depending on your floor plan, whether you're having the same exact floor plan or the floor plan is changed, you can either copy paste like the rooms that you have or again, make your own. However, since everything is exactly the same, what I want to do is going to go on level one and try to copy paste my room separators and rooms and apply them to the second floor because the floor plan is all the same. So I'm just going to make a selection going to go on filter. In here, I'm going to make sure that I'm selecting the room separations, also the rooms, and the room tags. That is mostly it, right? Room separation, room tags, and I'm going to select them all. Again, going to go through the modify tab, copy to the clipboard, paste, um, align to the selected views or like align current views. So for example, um, what if I go to the level two and here go with the align to the selected floor plan, level two, and then click on. As you can see, perfectly, it's getting placed on where it's supposed to be, right? Going to put it on fine, going to put it on system colors. And again, have to go through the annotate and apply the color field legend. On. So going to put it on rooms, on name or area, which one you wish, and then click on. So here, as you can see, we are having like the same colors because the name tags are all the same. We're having TV room. We're having the exact TV room up there. For that reason, they're sharing the same color with the lower. However, if you're having different sort of occup uh, occupancies, like the name is different. For example, if I call that as a second bit, like simply put on a two value there, then as you can see, the color is getting changed. So no longer the bedrooms are gonna share the same color. That way, once we go through the section and we make the same color field legend happen, we can see that whether those rooms are all the same or something is different that the designer wanted to convey that. So here, in order to have a colorful legend, first I need to have a section. To do a section, what I can do is I go there, 
and I create a section. I click on there and according, let's say, to the line of the section that I wish, for example, I wish to have a section like that, something. Once you place, place the um, section, then you can change the view side of that section. For example, I want to make sure that the depth of like the section is fully covered till the end of the building. Then you double click on that section symbol and you will get into the section. You put it on fine. I want to put it on consistent colors at the same too. And here to see the uh, color field legend and the occupancies, what you need to do is again, go to the annotate and place the color field legend. So I'm going to go there, place the color field legend, put it on rooms, put it, for example, on name and hit on OK. As you can see, specifically on that section, these occupancies or these rooms are all cut by that section. For that reason, we are only seeing these specific legends because there is no um, sort of like um, who or like a point that I will be seeing other um, room legends rather than what I see here. So for that reason, I'm seeing what, whatever sort of like room legends that are already caught here. Next, what is important is that I can show my uh, client that what are these spaces that are getting used by these spaces. For example, if I'm having like a ceiling here and then technically the height of that floor, the height of like that room, is all limited to here, then there is no point to have my color field legend or like the space of the room going up there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna scroll, you'll find the um, room there and bring that down or instead use the limit offset. So here, I'm just gonna do manually that, as you can see. So here in that way, I'm conveying that sort of information that this part is going to be reserved and it's not going to be used by that. So let's say for any purpose of like the structural stuff or mechanical plumbing, this space is going to get used by your stuff. And also that way, if any sort of like analysis is getting done on your model later on, sort of like energy analysis or like heating or cooling calculations, the same sort of stuff could be also happening to your space setting. So again, we'll make just sure that all these spaces are only sharing the spaces that we should. Or you can put on the same value over the problem. So even in that case that these two rooms are uh, sort of like using different sort of like height in terms of their ceilings, that's actually a good gesture that you can show that piece of information. For example, this is a bathroom, right? According to the legend that we have, and technically it should be having lower ceiling than the living room, right? For that reason, you can see that that information is perfectly getting the same. And that's it. So as you can see, we don't like put on uh, components and like make your model like super occupied and busy. You can convey as much as information that you wish, right? So you have like, uh, you already tagged uh, all the spaces, all the rooms that like you were having in this project. Plus you're also identifying those spaces that is not part of the room. So, um, Anyone who's seen this project can understand that what are the limits, where the ceilings are coming, and uh, what space is already reserved and assigned to the further design in terms of structural and mechanics. So that's pretty much it, what you guys need to know about the color field legend. So I hope you guys find this video useful, and uh, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet as I'm always constantly updating the contents to make sure that you guys are getting to learn new stuff and tricks. Thank you.